Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, but we're gonna be looking at the running return on investment. So we haven't looked at this one in a while, but I think it's a very useful metric in identifying local accumulation pit phases, as well as speculative bubble tops. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. First, I, I do want to remind you that if you or, or tell you if you if you're new to the channel and you're and you're wondering what this is, so this channel is, is primarily focused on on looking at things from a more data science perspective. But I do pull up TradingView um, on on some videos. So this one is is the running ROI of Bitcoin. So this is the one year running ROI. So it's basically just taking every for every step that we take through time, every day, we're looking back a year and identifying what the ROI would have been had you bought a year ago. Um, and so you're constantly shifting your reference point. You're not you're not just looking at the, the market cycle bottom and, and measuring the ROI from that. You're always shifting what you're measuring the ROI from and it's just 365 days in the past, okay? so. In this manner, the one-year ROI looks like this for Bitcoin, okay? If we add the two-year ROI, we, we see something similar. And and you, you, the similarities here, if, if you first look at the one-year ROI, you can see that it tends to bottom at around negative, or at, at around point, point 0.1, cl not quite point 0.1, around point 0.2 or so. Um, and, and what this means is that you're looking at around an 80% loss in a year, okay? So that's about as bad as it gets in one year. You can see slightly it's gone, it's gone slightly below it. Now, on the other hand, if you look at the local tops, you can see that it is decreasing. And we've seen this type of pattern before. It, it's similar to the logarithmic regression band that's a monotonically increasing function fit to non-bubble data of the price of Bitcoin, which this fit, right, was to non-bubble data. This chart has nothing to do with non-bubble data. It has nothing to do with uh, some fit that some YouTuber made. It's literally just taking the price of Bitcoin and looking at the one-year ROI, and yet we still see that same pattern emerge, okay? So we, I'm, I'm just putting on here the one-year, the two-year, the three-year, and the four-year ROIs. So you can see they're all essentially decreasing with time, but they, they tend to, to pop back upwards every, every so often. Now, if we dive back into the one-year ROI a little bit more, let's first look at it here. Let's uh, um, only look it up. Let's also shift the y-axis so that it's a little bit more encompassing. You can see that we have that same trend line, right? That where it's 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 trending downward, where the one-year ROI back in 2011 peaked at around almost 200x. In 2013, it peaked at just under 100x, maybe around 90x. And then in 2017, it peaked at around 25x or so. And, and so we identify these peaks and you say, you know what? This is a this is a macro level trend, and if we continue this, we might be able to help identify where the next peak will be, as measured by our one year return on investment. So, in the same manner, the green regime would be the the regime where you're actually, if you had bought Bitcoin a year ago, you would have actually been losing losing value. Okay, so this would be the the lower bound, and you can see the lower bound tends to stay the same. It doesn't really tend to change that much, where the upper bound does systematically come down. Now, if we were to project this out, and, and in the same manner, remember, we're looking at, at lengthening cycles, and this one, I, I've drawn it in 2023. You guys know the drill. It could be earlier. It could be later. I, if it's if it's not 2023, you know, like one question that I do sometimes get is, if it's not 2023, would I think it's more likely to be 2022 or 2024? Um, and, and if it's 2022, I think it would have to be the very end of 2022, like the fourth quarter. Um, so if I had to say, if it, if it were not 2023, if the next peak were not 2023, then I would lend, I would lean towards 2024 over 2022. But at the end of the day, you know, no one really knows exactly when it's going to happen. The main contention is that it's most likely not going to happen next year. So if we draw this out in a, in a similar manner as before, and just draw from peak to bottom, peak to bottom, and just extend this out, you can see the general shift, right? The, 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 this pattern emerging where we go from peak to peak to peak to peak, um, but the the space the area between these cur between this curve and then this one um, continues to get it is more and more right as we 
as we continue on down. Now, I would actually have to measure it. I mean, I have to, I do need to remember this is a logarithmic scale. So maybe, maybe if I integrate the area between the curve, or if I, if I integrate the curve and find the area between the curve, um, then, th then potentially, you know, I, I could, I could calculate out what it is, but I, it's hard to, it's hard to visualize just on a logarithmic scale because the idea, if, if you're unfamiliar with calculus, of course, would just be to um, calculate the area between this curve and and then this line here and you can do that through integration and then and then this one as well and then this third one so on a if this were a linear scale it would be quite obvious that this area would be larger than this area however this is a logarithmic scale so it, that might not actually be the case I would actually have to calculate it out um, so looking at it, it it tends to make sense again that, that this is something that we would we would expect to see something like this where the cycles continue to get longer and the ROI continues to get lower. But here, what are we looking at? So this is a 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, maybe 5 or 6x. So what does this mean? Well, let's say, let's suppose that it's around a 5x. Does that mean that Bitcoin can only go from here? Does that mean it can only go up to say $50,000? No, it does not. It just means that the one year ROI will probably be peaking at around 5x, maybe 4 to 6x, somewhere in that, in that ballpark. So imagine, Imagine Bitcoin gets to $20,000 by the beginning of 2022, maybe the end of 2021, and then it, it picks up pace. And, and let's say by by the let's say by the summer of 2022, the price of Bitcoin is is $30,000. OK, so what that means is that within the next year, so from, say, uh, summer of 2022 to summer of 2023, the one year ROI could be capped at around 5x. And the 5x return on investment from a $30,000 Bitcoin would put it at $100, $150,000. So I don't think it'll quite make it to $150,000, but you kind of understand um, what how we can use this as another metric to try to identify what the next local top will be. So maybe in a future video, I will I will calculate out the area between the curves through integration, and, and we can look to see if there's any pattern there. Um, but I don't actually have it handy, and I didn't think about it before I made this video. If you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And then also check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com and you'll get access to weekly premium report, weekly premium video, a risk dashboard, a private Telegram alerts channel and a private Telegram chat room. That's if you want access to the exclusive content. Um, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.